Uh, my name is uh, Knut Perander, and uh, for those of you who have uh, heard me speak before, you're probably tired of this, but I am a proud uh, man from Harsta. So you're in my hometown, and I'm really glad that uh, the weather is not at its best, because then no one would be in here, because this is really a, a fine place. On behalf of Innovation Norway, I want to welcome you to the session Regional Development, the role of culture and the creative industries in the Arctic. Kind of an easy question. We can solve it in two times 45 minutes and go home. Or as we all, everyone, or every moderator today has said, this is too large a subject to only discuss for this short time, but uh, we will try. As you have seen, we have 10 speakers and we try to mingle them as well as possible. And we have a combination of cases and a debate. The debate will be in part two. Um, first of all, or second maybe, uh, Innovation Over would like to thank the Ministry of Culture and the Arctic Arts Festival, or Festivalon, for this fantastic uh, venue and this fantastic uh, meeting place, networking place. Uh, and I have to say that I have never uh, uh, mingled and networked so well as I have here. But so many interesting people, I don't want to go home. Um, so this has really been a, 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 a nice uh, arena, and I hope that we see each other in Rovaniemi in two years. As someone has said already, maybe. Um, uh, we're going to say a little bit about Innovation Norway soon, but first I have to present the, the co-host for this session, is the, and this is the first time I say it in English, the North Norwegian Savings Bank Cultural Foundation, represented with Bjorn Erik here, has also uh, been a part of this uh, session, and he has politely uh, let me uh, lead this, uh, but he's a quite big part of this. Um, the bank has been really important for the culture and creative industries in the north of Norway for the last five years and has uh, invested a lot of money into arch projects. Yes. Uh, a little bit about Innovation Norway, and this is the, this is the time where I usually scare the cultural, uh, I can't call it the cultural businesses, the cultural uh, uh, sector away. We are the government's most important uh, instrument for innovation and development of Norwegian enterprises and industry. So, for some of you, we are on the other side. Uh, we support companies, both in development, in competitive advantages for Norwegian companies going abroad, and we also urge the innovation in companies. That's our main job, so every time we have to present something, we talk about financing, we talk about commercializing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't work with culture. We are really taking it serious, and um, especially in the north of Norway, we work a lot with the cultural industries. Let me see now. We, are, we have so little time, I, I needed a script. So I probably use double, twice the time I, I need. Um, we start off now with a short presentation from Innovation Norway, the Vice Director of Innovation Norway Arctic, before we have the first case from Henningsvær. Have everyone, anyone been to Henningsvær? Anyone not from Norway been to Henningsvær? <laughs> yes, it's the most, uh, probably the most beautiful place in the world. I, in the script it says in Northern Norway, but, but in the world. And we have two really good examples on how cultural entrepreneurs have been part of developing the, the old fishing village of Henningsvær. Uh, after our visit to Lofoten, we'll have the Finnish delegation uh, uh, down here uh, with the University of Lapland and the Arctic uh, Design Week and talk a little bit about how they work with art and design, and how design is a part of branding of the Northern Finland. And uh, Rovaniemi, as you all are aware of, is the, 
the sign capital of Finland. Right? Yeah. Art and design capital. Not okay, Arct Arctic design. I think you should say art and design capital of Finland. We say that from now on. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we have a short break. And we have the Film Pool Noor from uh, Sweden uh, presenting their work and their um, kind of complex structure. But they, they'll present it in just a short amount of time. And at the end, if everything goes, goes as planned, we have about 25 minutes for uh, debating and discussions. Uh, and that will be opened by Sven Harald Holmen from Vardø Restored. And if you think uh, Henningsvær is nice, you should go to Vardø because that's the new flavor of the month in north, no, north of Norway. And uh, Sven Harald, should, you should really talk for two hours, but today we're cutting a little bit down. But uh, we'll have some pictures for, for you, and he will tell, tell us a little bit about the, the project Vardø Restored. And, uh, a little bit about Kumafest. Yeah. Okay. That's it. So now it's time for a break. No. Oh, thank you for laughing. That's really <laughs> nice of you. I just give the stage to uh, to Randy, and she'll uh, take you through some of the work we do in Innovation Norway. Please. The world looks more than ever towards the Arctic and the northern area. The global climate change has put nature and people under pressure in our regions. You have probably seen it, those changes. They happen fast and the Nordic countries need to address these challenges. We need a more responsible development in the future. This is why sustainable, uh, sustainable development and sustainable industry, industrial de development in the Arctic is the main object of the Nordic Council of Ministers Arctic Corporation. Climate change brings challenges. Rich natural resources provide opportunities. On one side, we need to protect and respect our past. On the other, we need to develop our region in a healthy way for the benefit of all living here. The Arctic is not just ice, sea and natural resources. The Arctic is also human capital and culture. A responsible development in the north should be based on the people of northern culture and should exploit the power and competence of the cultural field. Arts and culture can contribute to increased awareness of sustainability in the uh, broadest sense. Art and culture are important resources for those who live in and visit the Arctic. Art and culture contribute to develop uh, several areas of society as a factor in local and regional development and as a meeting point and arena for contact exchange and cross-border cooperation. This is what we want to emphasize and discuss. The value and the potential of art and culture in the work for a good and sustainable, sustainable development in the Arctic. The cultural exhibition Nordic Matters at the South Bank Center in London in 2017 is an outstanding standing opportunity to gain international attention across the full range of Nordic arts and culture. Nordic artists and cultures are used to collaborate across borders. The interest in the Nordic region is increasing, and now it is important that we are able to capitalize on this. We hope that the Nordic matters will contribute to increased international interest and attention to our cultural exp expressions and our artists. The demand for art, cultural products and services has never been greater. A UNESCO report from March 2016 shows that global trade 
in cultural products and services has doubled in the period from 2004 till 2013, despite global decline. The report also shows a significant shift from physical cultural products as CD, DVD, and printed publications to digital services. And digitalization provides new opportunities. The question is now how Nordic arts and cultural actors can realize these opportunities in the best possible way. How can we use this increased interest and our digital advantage contribute to grow and develop this field? And how can help promote Nordic arts and cultural products in the Nordic and global markets. One factor that can help us answer these questions is working in clusters. Like the one enrolled in the Norwegian Innovation Cluster Program. This program, a cluster is defined as a geographical concentration of enterprises and related knowledge communities linked by complementary or similar of interests and needs, often emerge over time on the basis of lo location advantages and natural development dynamics. Generally, participation companies belong to the same value chain or the same knowledge technology base. This program is uh, supported by the government. It aims to trigger and enchase collaborative development activities in clusters. The goal is to increase the cluster dynamics and, and attractiveness. It also aims to increasing the individual companies' innova innovativeness and competitiveness. Each cluster has its own organization and its own development project. A cluster organization is a formal institution that is established to facilitate increased interaction and cooperation between part participants in the cluster. A cluster organization is based on an organized partnership between the, the participants in the cluster, often with public development agency as important contributors. And uh, innovation is not uh, just funding the clusters. We are also giving them advice how to develop, involving them in networking activities and branding them. Well, what about the results? Well, we have documented a positive development in each cluster. This development is based on a cluster starting point and depending on its maturity level. So, cluster could be a great tool for more cooperation in the Nordic countries. I mentioned that concentration in geographical was important to ensure a good collaboration between company. It is true. But we have also examples for successful clusters with which have extended their partnerships. You can't set a geographical standard for clusters. You need a hub or a core which is a driving force. But the way collaboration happens, this is the key. And I think we can succeed in the Nordic. Nordics. We know how to collaborate. Our countries taken separately are small. But together we have a common ground, a common heritage and common challenges. So what I invite you to think to do is to think more about the positive role of the Nordic arts and culture for the future development for our, of our region. I think cross-borders, cooperation, using the cluster methodology, methodology <laughs> is one way to grow within this field and reach global markets. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Randy. And we have clusters uh, that, wa that stretches to America as well. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, please. Now we're going to Henningsvær. And uh, Cecilia here is, has a place called Engelsmannsbrygga, the English 
man's uh, war, or is it yeah. building more? Yeah. Something. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, she will give us a view of the fishing village Hanningsvall seen from her ankle, angle because she has been there for quite a while. This is Cecilia. Okay, it's been so much talking now, so here comes a lot of pictures. <laughs> Okay, my name is Cecilia Horland. I'm an artist and I run and own uh, the gallery Engelsmannsbrygge in Henningsvær. It's just about three hours drive from here. Um, we are two glass blowers, uh, one photographer, and my material is porcelain and analog photography. Um, we have an open space gallery uh, and workshops, and our guests can see us work. I moved up north uh, uh, from Oslo together with my photographer boyfriend, supposed to stay for one year, to live out the dream about the north. You know, it was all about nature, it was about the weather, the light, the dark, fishing, birding, photography. The one took the other. Uh, life happened. I'm still here, 23 years later. I think I'm going to stay. <laughs> Historically, Henningsvær has been one of the most important fishing communities in North of Norway. Most of the inhabitants used to be fishermen or worked in the fishing industries. Engelskmannsbrygge was built by an English firm, uh, company, uh, I mean, as a cod liver oil factory. Today, only a handful of fishermen, uh, there is only a handful of fishermen in Henningsvær, but nevertheless, the old fishing village is full of life, uh, not just during the cod season, but all year round. I thought I would use my own story to try to explain the development the last 20 years. Natural environment and the possibility for mountain climbing, surfing, kayaking, fishing has always been there. Uh, during the 90s, Henningsvær had already started to attract tourists. Here was already a hotel, we had a restaurant, grocery store, climbing school and even a national romantic art gallery. In the middle of the town square, Engelsbanbrygge had been for sale for over three years. One summer, a couple of friends, glassblowers, visited us. We borrowed the keys, made an offer to the owners, and got it. We owned a building. And then, there was no way back. So we started the renovation and the aim to realize our dreams of joint workshops, galleries, apartments, and so on. The locals, they welcomed us. They were a bit skeptic about us, four young people moving from the south, but since we came with a different business, a new vibe, uh, that didn't bring any competition, they gave us a chance. We realized that people um, around us had a lot of strange ideas and thoughts about our projects. Uh, friends in Oslo, for instance, they assumed that we had got this building from the government because we moved up north. <laughs> but uh, friends here in the north, they assumed that we had got the building from the government because we were artists. Well, it was rather the opposite. <laughs> At that time, there were, a few, there were few places to apply for support, and the application we sent among them to Innovation Norway and uh, the culture department at the county, we got refused. A long story, ending up with one man, a brave banker. He had visions, and he, he thought about our projects, and uh, he gave us the loan we needed. So, the next chapter in this story is when other artists and founders with new ideas of business in Henningsvær got their applications of support to the same places refused. 
This time, the answer was that, for instance, Innovation Norway, they did not want to support business that could be in competition to our company. So then we started writing letters, support letters, asking them, please help these new businesses and these people so we could offer our guests out here more to do and look at, and so that people maybe stayed another day. We argued that it would be easier to cooperate in marketing, advertising, happenings, projects, when there were uh, more people and companies out here. Well, that worked, because time was at our time, on our side. So, from a negative trend during the 80s and 90s, there are now more than 50 businesses in our little village. We are 500 inhabitants. There are a lively life, we have a big bunch of competent entrepreneurs and constantly growing amount of quality-seeking high-end visitors from all over the world, all year round. Thanks to supporters like the Art Council, Nuland County Council, and especially the Cultural Business Development Foundation of the Saving Bank in North Norway, who has used Henningsvær as kind of a case, kind of a... Would you, yeah, mm. uh, we today have a lot of things to offer. We have an international gallery for contemporary art, the Caviar Factory. Many of you know about it. We have several cafes. We have, like here, the famous uh, uh, Art Candle Cafe. We have our own tattoo studio. We have two silversmiths, a small coffee roasting place. We have several hotels, we have small shops, and we have restaurants. Even the old, even the old woodwork factory has got new life, thanks to two brave young men who believed in the place and had, have creative thoughts about the future. Andreas, here, he will tell more about this place after my presentation. Okay, so what makes it easier for us out here um, in Henningsvær when it comes to cooperation is that we are situated at a dead end road. You do not necessarily need to um, marketing your own business, but more the place itself. If people just choose to drive out here and get out of their cars, they're probably going to visit all of us. The example of cooperation I'm most proud of is Førjuls Eventyre. We call it the uh, pre-Christmas fairy tale. Uh, it all started 10 years ago. We were 10 cultural businesses, got together and decided to construct a whole new season. Every weekend in November and December until Christmas, we invite people to a cozy, low-key, relaxed experience for the whole family. Activities like glass blowing, candle making, word games, gallery visits, food eating, concerts during the blue hours or in a stormy weather has proved itself to be a success. This year, we were more than 21 companies participating and had more visitors than ever before. Now, there is no way back, and we have decided that we are going to keep on small, but beautiful. So, what brings the future? Well, last year, this year, it's been established one new fish landing company. We already have four in our little village. Uh, we have one fish processing company, established just last week, and the number of new, home, new or homecoming fishermen moving up here with their boats are increasing. So, in one way, the circle is closed. And I think it's proved that activity creates more activity. A lot of small communities along the Norwegian coast wish they had the same development as we had. Right now, the number of young people moving here in their 20s and 30s are eager uh, to move to our village. Uh, and I think our biggest 
ch uh, challenge right now is to find lodging or housing and where do we park our cars? <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah, I can take the advice later. So, thank you. <laughs> So um, it's a good story, and the, fish, the fisherman came back. Please, and now one of the, the, f the fresh blood in Henningsvær, uh, who also have traveled a uh, distance to start his entrepreneurship there, is Andreas Jelle, who has uh, established um, several activities in Henningsvær. Uh, and uh, will tell us a little bit about more about this. And this is more like a work in progress than uh, a research. This is not a research project yet. So, uh, if you're ready, Andreas. Almost. Almost. I have no jokes to tell, so I've <laughs> used them all. So, please. Okay. Hello, everybody. Oh, I have to stay here. So, my name is uh, Andreas Jelle, and uh, I'm not from Henningsvær, I'm from Bergen. And uh, we had a visit to uh, Lofoten, it's about uh, three years ago. And uh, that's where I will start my uh, story today. This was actually how it uh, all, uh, all started. Um, we were lying... Uh, like this, in the grass, and it was about uh, 30, uh, 30 degrees at that time. Uh, apparently the hottest summer in uh, 70 years in Lofoten. And we thought this was quite uh, normal. <laughs> um, after lying uh, in the grass and climbing for, uh, for some weeks, we, uh, we found out we need some uh, stimulation, some uh, cultural stimulation, so uh, it was a quick choice to uh, travel to the place that uh, Cecilia just uh, showed us so well, uh, Henningsvær. And uh, we came to uh, Henningsvær, and I think it went uh, 10 minutes, and we met uh, some locals, they wanted to talk to us. And uh, they told us about uh, the nature, of course, and all the cultural activities uh, that uh, happen in, uh, in this little uh, fishing village of yeah, 500 uh, inhabitants. So the next day, a uh, young musician uh, in the right corner there, uh, he took us on a, on a mountain trip uh, to Festvogtin. And this is actually uh, from that day. Uh, it's about 2, two uh, a.m. in the night. And uh, on this top, uh, this guy, Sondre, uh, pointed down at, uh, at Henningsvær and uh, told us about uh, an old factory that was for sale. And immediately we found this very interesting old big factory uh, for sale. So we ran down the mountain and we got, uh, got the uh, presentation of the building. So this is the Trevarefabrikken. Uh, it has a carpentry in the uh, second floor. And uh, it was a shrimp peeling station in first floor. And uh, it also ha had a cod liver oil production facility uh, in the front. Um, we went in like this, and yeah, it looked like uh, it had done uh, always. They never made any changes. At this place, it was never renovated, so uh, it looked like the carpenters just uh, left uh, the day before. Uh, and we found this uh, very, how to say, um, yeah, interesting. We, we could see all the 
histories of this factory just lying around. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, actually the same uh, taking from the same place uh, in the 50s when it was uh, production here. So we came, we went in the building, and in third floor we opened the doors, and then all of Lufoten just uh, came in. Uh, and uh, at that point, I think uh, all of us, um, Mats and uh, his brother and me, and my brother, we were uh, very sure that this project, uh, we want to do something here. This is so exciting. Uh, so, uh, one week later, we bought a building for all our spare money. And we didn't actually have uh, so many plans. Uh, we had some thoughts, but we didn't have any like, concrete plans for the building. We had a uh, historical object lying in a beautiful uh, nature landscape and in an uh, exciting city or fishing village. So we started uh, to ask for help. That was about the first thing we did. We announced uh, Dugnad, that means uh, volunteer work. So um, we gathered friends, musicians, artists, carpenters, um, dancers, I think uh, all kinds of people uh, came to visit the first summer. And uh, we cleaned out the factory, that was the first goal, to just clean it out and start the, start the process. Uh, this uh, is actually from the first festival we did. Uh, it's about uh, one and a half year ago, Lydrört. Uh, it was a little uh, art festival where we had some performances. Uh, it's taken in the, in the front room, uh, third floor. This is from uh, the Dugnad, the volunteer work. And uh, last year we uh, got the funding from uh, Kultur Minnefonna to uh, renovate the roof. So we heard that uh, to renovate uh, the roof is a uh, smart thing to do, because it was leaking, uh, leaking a lot. And uh, I can say our backgrounds, uh, we are uh, engineers from uh, Antenu in Trondheim. So uh, I'm not an artist myself, but we uh, now uh, build, rebuild Trevafabriken so we can facilitate uh, artists, and other people. So this is the local doctor in Henningsvær. He helped us uh, to crush a wall in first floor. So, I mean, I have a lot of pictures like this. Uh, and the story will go on for, for many more years in the same, uh, same speed, I guess. This is from a dinner. We had uh, also the first, uh, first year uh, with uh, yeah, all of these uh, different types of people visiting us and, uh, and helping us to, to rebuild uh, the factory. Uh, we also started to experiment with some uh, activities. So this is the yoga. Uh, we did in uh, the cod liver oil. You see this? This is uh, uh, where they produced the cod liver oil uh, 70 years ago. And they produced around uh, 700,000 liters uh, a year with the cod liver oil in, the, in this room. And uh, this floor we will start renovating uh, this winter. Um, after the Dugnad, we uh, found out, okay, we need to get some help. Uh, we don't have any architectural uh, competence, so we went to uh, Antenu, and uh, we befriended, uh, we uh, 
met Silje and Aspen. They were two architect students, uh, and they did a master degree on uh, on Trevafabrikken. And uh, they kind of made a master plan uh, together with us, uh, and we followed it quite uh, quite good uh, from. Uh, uh, from the date this was finished. It was finished in 2000 and, uh, or late 2000 and, uh, no, mid uh, June 2016. This is also from third floor. We have a quite uh, uh, interesting uh, sleeping concept where we will build uh, wooden structures for uh, accommodation so we can keep the space in. Uh, in the factory. And this is from uh, first floor where we started the uh, renovation uh, this year. Cutting out for windows and this was the result. So um, we opened actually two weeks ago uh, the first floor and uh, we will open uh, uh, yeah, restaurant, a place where you can eat. Uh, we will open the kitchen uh, within a week. So, uh, yeah. And all this uh, kind of uh, time period, you know, uh, last uh, half year, we've uh, uh, got help from all of uh, Handingsfair, you know, uh, fishermen and climbers coming. And this Dugnats on has been kind of a major uh, factor for uh, for making it uh, happen, actually. So uh, without all the, the Dugnad, and of course without all the help from uh, the funding we got through uh, from Kultur, Minnefonna and Kulturnæringsstiftelsen, Innovation Norway, and the uh, Art Council, and many more, Fylke, Norlands Fylke, it would uh, have been a very uh, difficult project to, uh, to make happen. This is also two weeks ago uh, when we opened up. We were very lucky <laughs> with the weather that day. And, uh, and uh, people were uh, dancing, so... Uh, now we see that uh, when we make uh, happenings and arrangements, uh, we actually get uh, visitors from all of, uh, not just travelers and people coming by, but uh, locals from all around Lofoten come to, to visit these uh, events we make. So we will have a strong focus on making events to gather uh, people. Now there were 200 people coming last Saturday, and I think this Friday uh, there will be the uh, same amount of people. And we actually don't know where they come from. It's uh, almost uh, because there's 200 people and 500 living in, in Hanisar. I will make it quick. This is uh, a festival we will have in July. It uh, got sold out very quick without we having any artists. And all the artists uh, coming, they are uh, participating to uh, rebuild the factory. Uh, so they're doing it actually pro bono uh, for the factory. And we also will have uh, LIAF uh, in September. Uh, and they will, uh, Lofoten International Art Festival, will then rent uh, two stories. So this is from the last year's uh, concert at Festvogtinn. We will also have a concert there uh, this year under the festival on Monday. Looks quite nice. And yes, for all our uh, sponsors and uh, funding, uh, it would not have been possible to do this project uh, without their support. So uh, we are really happy that uh, we get, uh, that people believe in the project and, uh, yeah, that we can continue to rebuild the factory and make a new meeting place in Lofoten.
Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, now we'll have the, um, uh, the Finnish delegation, uh, starting with Timo uh, Jukkela. You can just prepare yourself, and the rest of you can just come forward. Then we have... Um, I have practiced this, but uh, let, let's see how it, does, how it goes uh, live. Julius Åforsegd from uh, the Arctic Design Week. We have uh, Maria Humaniemi. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. From the University of Lapland. And Paivi Takkokallio. Yes. From the Finnish Association of Designers and, uh, and um, more associated. Just uh, have a seat, please. Okay. Thank you. And Timo will start with a short uh, overview. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Thank you for your marvelous presentation. I, I'm, this is much more boring. I go to the <laughs> university. I'd rather go to the it's been just like a beautiful island, but this is a one-way on island too. Uh, university in Lapland, uh, 25 years ago, there was not uh, any art or design. Uh, 20, 25 years ago, uh, Faculty of Art and Design was in Tablis, in the part of uni University of uh, Lapland. And let me say some, some, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a right uh, baby, but uh, maybe eight years ago, seven years ago, we didn't have Arctic art and design, but now we have Arctic art and design. Yeah, correct. So Arctic has floating somehow south from the Spitsberger north. Okay, a uh, little bit uh, about the background that uh, what I'm talking. This is um, actually. University of Lapland, we have an uh, art and design faculty, social science faculty, education, law, and uh, Arctic Research, Research Center. University is uh, profiling itself as an as a science and art university and highlighting collaboration between science and art. And I, I think that uh, that's quite an interesting situation. Both are ways to understand our world and develop our world in an equal way. So the profile is a research on the change in the Arctic and North. And all the disciplines should be taking part of that kind of research. This uh, challenge, research on change in the Arctic and the North, is divided uh, four sections. Sustainable development and social dust justice. Uh, we have uh, done quite a long time let me say, for example, environmental art, uh, community, community art, uh, social engaged art uh, would take this kind of question in consideration. Uh, one of the areas is northern well-being and education and work. Uh, we all know, we have heard about a lot of discussion about the connection of art to the, to the well-being, health and like that. That has been one of our development lines. Responsibility tourism. Tourism is the one, one of the main industry in Lapland. What means responsible tourism? And how art and design is collaborating with that? Uh, I think Maria will mention about that uh, when he's uh, explaining a little bit about uh, development of uh, Arctic art and design and, and applied visual art. We have a lot of experiences to be in collaboration with the tourist industries. And then, fourth section, cultural center, 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 center service design. It's quite a new concept uh, under the design, but uh, it's a, some, such kind of tool that the uh, university is now taking part in development, as well as businesses, but also, also uh, public sector and the third sector development work. Uh, we, are, we have now some uh, little bit under 1,000 students, a uh, little bit more than 100 staff working in that faculty. And uh, we have uh, degrees like a visual art education, which is not only school education, but this kind of educational attitude to, to art and, and development work. 
Uh, we have audiovisual media culture, which is a resource on media, multimedia, moving images. Uh, we have uh, graphic design, which is not uh, any at all this kind of illustration design. It's uh, much more this kind of visual communication now. Uh, we have industrial design, which is divided in, of course, product design, but service design is the, maybe, maybe the newest one and interaction design, which is very much connected for the digitalization of services, for example. Then we have clothing design, fashion design, uh, which is not uh, only this kind of fashion, but uh, uh, um, design for uh, Arctic extreme conditions, churching new wave of uh, uh, design clothing, which is uh, interactive, for example, De textile and interior design is connected very often to the tourist places, touristic uh, interiors, but it's also about that kind of smart textile, for example, how to develop textile which uh, protect us uh, in summer and somehow work with positive way with mosquitoes. <laughs> we have uh, applied sound expression and we have this applied visual art and nature photography which is a new degree and Arctic Art and Design International Master Program which Maria will tell a little bit more. With these tools we are working now under, under the concept of Arctic Art and Design. I'm not going to explain what Arctic art and design is because the definition of that is still open and it's a, more or less like a working concept for us. But the idea is that, that we are taking in consideration all these things, what, is, what, is, uh, are, what are the challenges and, and possibilities in our northern area. But Arctic design is very much connected for the well-being, of the uh, North, but it's also connected for the business development of North. It takes consideration of these problems which are typical for remote and partially populated areas. So it's, uh, it's about uh, not uh, this kind of design, uh, from fashion design, it's more like everyday life design, but it's very let me say, international network, and it's also the uh, consideration of these indigenous people's uh, cultural sensitive things. So it's design and artistic activity. So these are these, this is the brain, brain work we are collaborating, uh, not only in the research and the, and the education, but also in the regional development work. So the th third main sector after the education and the research is, uh, let me say, this kind of regional development. So we have a lot of these projects and all the studies are organized in a way that students should and at least we hope that everybody takes somehow uh, part in some kind of some type of regional development work during these studies. So have, now we have developed a couple of tools for that. We are now using, uh, uh, using the concept of uh, center of ex expertise in Arctic uh, design. And this is, has been a project, a three years project, to, to, to build up this kind of uh, infrastructure in the university, which is not only for the teaching, but it's also for the collaboration with the uh, public sector and, and businesses. So it's a forum to collaborate. And uh, there is uh, different things that what we have been developing. Of course, this kind of uh, typical startup uh, uh, companies are working in the, in, the, in the faculty. Startup support for the students, different type of combination, uh, competition models for the students with, uh, with businesses, uh, business companies. Uh, 
Uh, we have international research collaboration, for example, with Volkswagen in service design uh, based uh, research activities. Uh, Julius and Paivi will talk more about that uh, Arctic Design and Arctic Design Week, which is a very important tool to collaborate with the city of Rovaniemi, who is profiling itself as a design, design capital, Arctic design capital. So we have tried to build up such kind of model that uh, we, can, we, can, we can make such kind of gesture for the companies that what are the research results we can maybe offer for you. But also in other way down, that uh, the businesses can give us uh, problems, they need solutions, and uh, then we build up the research project to, to try to find a solution for these kind of problems. So we have design labs, for example, service design corner, which is this kind of meeting place of uh, collaboration. We have the mobile lab, uh, lab uh, infrastructure that we are working out in the Rovaniemi, in the, in the remote area. We have this kind of fab lab uh, system where it's uh, meant to develop in a way that that companies and those who are interested, they come, they they they, they have. They, they are able to come to the faculty and, and make, make some testing and, and learn a little bit about what are the possibilities uh, and, and what, may be, what, what are these uh, things that uh, could support uh, their uh, businesses. Uh, in the beginning of this session, we heard about this kind of cluster type of uh, working. And now uh, the whole Lapland regional development work is uh, organized in such kind of clusters. Uh, and the Arctic design cluster is one. And the cluster consists of this educational, uh, ed educational institution, like the Faculty of Art and Design, but also from some, some, some sectors from the Applied Sciences University. And then there are, of course, these uh, companies who are companies uh, working in the field of uh, creative industries. But uh, that's not enough because we need also these big companies who need these creative industry services and uh, services of all products. So the Arctic Design Cluster is uh, some kind of network to think about that how in Lapland we can, we can develop that kind of design and art collaboration with the local economics. And, and the cluster is working with another clusters, which are, let me say, interesting in a way that, of course, there is this kind of uh, Arctic industry, which means a lot of this kind of uh, uh, bio, biotechnology and, and circula 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 circulating industry today. But what is quite interesting, this Arctic Smart Rural Network, which is uh, everything like, like a fishery, reindeer herring, milk production, berry picking, things like that. What, what are these possibilities uh, to put together this kind of creative way of thinking of art, media, design, and, and these uh, offers from our ecosystem to create new businesses. That's uh, one point which is now more or less the most, most in interesting for myself. Uh, okay, but uh, this is just uh, as a background of this, uh, what we are doing now. And uh, maybe, maybe Maria will be the next one. Maria Huhmarim is our Lapland University, uh, university collector. And I just have to uh, interrupt you. We, have, we need a three-minute break because we have some people coming in and someone going out.